All right, so this is a pair of minis that my buddy Bill provided to me. Um, this is just a fun paint, uh, no necessarily deadline necessarily. Uh, it's just kind of a have fun. Um, the first of which is this curl, which we're going to be paying pretty true to form to the box art here. Um, and then the other is um, this one right now, which is base coated. So as you can see, both have been base coated in the uh, Citadel base, Mephist and Red. And then we did base coats on some of the other primary colors, uh, including Abaddon Black for her boots, Celestra Gray for the sleeves as well as the leggings, um, Xandria Dust for a lot of the details to include the ruffles on the dress, the collar and the pouches on her belt, and then uh, Dryad Bark for her uh, vest, which goes all the way around right now. So um, this is just going to be a quick 10 minutes of continuous work looking at um, different aspects of her outfit as well as... Um, you know, just cleaning up some details as we get ready for shading. I really want to fill in um, just different aspects. So first things first, this is water. Uh, Going to be re-wetting the dry palette here. Um, this is water that I keep on hand uh, for airbrushing. It's not necessarily um, um, for airbrushing or for the palette management or whatever. It's just handy to have water in a uh, squeeze bottle that's available to be dispensed. Um, so now I'm trying to lay this out as flat as possible here and here's our wet palette. Um, I really like to use undercut sheets of parchment paper. Um, these are actually quite small cut um, so that I can take one sheet of parchment and uh, dispose of it and really go through a lot of whatever I need to do here. So um, it just helps me stay organized when I can dispose of them very easily. Um, so the first thing I want to do is looking at the model, um, there are some uh, areas here where the base coat was a little bit transparent. So I just want to get some of my primary colors, uh, in this case, dry bark back on the palette um, and see if we can uh, do another quick coat over it as well as clean up some of the details and um, this has a dark colored hair on the box art here um, I'm interested in probably following that so I'll look at a darker gray color for the hair and then that way we can have uh, both shades and highlights available yeah. so i'm just putting a little drop here i really don't need a lot because we're not going to do a large area base coating there's some water droplets here that i'm trying to collect um, and use to thin my paint um, without necessarily getting the whole palette soaking wet so i'm not worried about the belt as much as this area under the belt right here um, I've been watching Warhammer TV videos and while they do use a lot of paints, uh, really the point of what I'm, I'm getting at is at the beginning of the videos, he basically just baits coats the entire mini, uh, either Duncan or, uh, Peachy. And it's a technique I want to try more often. A lot of times what I'll do is just have my primed miniature and then I'll just start blocking in every single little color and seeing where I can get. I'm kind of working in the shadow of my own hand here. So I'm just trying to block in the vest. And just anyway, try and block in what I can on a primed model. And I'm just not enjoying that um, been a lot of work been a lot of pain and suffering because of it and I'm finally at a point where I'm just like you know what we're just gonna base coat the entire thing and then change the colors on 
whenever we need to have changed. Um, so what I think I'm going to use for my gray is a mid-tone gray that we have, which is MSP, uh, Mountain Stone. And I'll probably position this right here on my palette next to the lighter gray so that I can use the two kind of as a team. So right now we're going to be doing a, we're going to be blocking in the hair. So let me get a look here. So there's a hair flip right here that I want to start with. actually really enjoy this bright red color here that everything is base coated in um, and I'm interested in keeping as much of the model that highlight color as possible Uh, the flames on these witch kids usually come unpainted. I think they intend for you to do some sort of like, I don't know, transparent effect or something like that. But I love, love, love painting flames. Um, so... I really end up always just priming them. And then once that's over with, I need more water. There are some areas here around the horns. Where the paint is not adequately flowing into, like right there. Anyway, really enjoy painting flame effects. And so what ends up happening is I just end up inevitably priming or getting any type of uh, these flames or wings or or whatever clear acrylic part of the cast is I'm just painting over it I think it's a dang shame just to put a couple coats of ink on it or dye it or something like that So I'm trying to basically work my way up to the horns on either side without going over the horns. What I'm going to do is take, and there's a little recess here in between her hair and her shirt. Take this opportunity to try and get a darker pigment paint in that recess so it appears as a shadow. And I don't have to deal with that dark spot. So there we go. Ooh, there's a little bit under hair here. Trying to get underneath the hair flip. Details like that always worry me. It's probably unjustly because 
when this is based, it's going to be sitting on something that will not allow you to get an angle underneath there, but, oh, whatevs, do it on the painter. Uh, so now what we're going to do is take, and I want to edge highlight, we already have a kind of mid-tone gray on the brush. And do an edge there. Ooh. Brush is way too wet from what I'm trying to do here. Do an edge down to the bottom. A little bit right there. Same thing on this boot. Do an edge highlight. highlight so right now I'm trying to use the side of the brush as much as possible both in picking paint off the palette as well as applying paint to the miniature that's my dog stealing an antler from the room and moving it into the other room And then what I want to do now is I'm going to get some Celestra Gray back on the palette. So again, Celestra Gray. One drop. Back on the palette in the Celestra Gray spot. Uh, right now my brush apparently has an enormous amount of water on it, so I'm trying to get rid of it. And then take and right there on the front edge of the boots do a little bit of a more focused highlight oh no that's like a soup look at that let's see if it's still useful Not as useful as I was hoping, that's for sure. So I like that contrast a lot more. I like the contrast on the boots there. Um, I'm going to try and right now hit the belt buckle. Don't know if it's worth it because I'm probably going to end up doing it in a metallic. It's really wet so a lot of it went on. All right now I'm going to try and absorb some of that. Look at that. So I absorbed it out of the recess and now the belt buckle is just highlighted around outside edge. Couldn't be happier. Okay. Um, and then we'll do a tiny little touch up on the hair base coat here. Probably a little unnecessary in my opinion to correct my own work. So I'm really happy how the camera and the light work together right now. The problem is I sat a little far back in my chair and now I can't rest my elbows on the table. The table's so far away. Next time we start the video, it'll probably be much more centered over the table. So how's that? Um, pretty happy with that right now. Uh, we're going to let this dry for just a second, and then um, we are going to start building up the shade. So what I want to do is 
do kind of some recess shading very carefully on the hair and around the edges of the bottom of the skirt and the tunic. So um, this, um, if you haven't seen it, is my shade holder. It prevents me from dumping shade over all of my belongings. Uh, I'm going to do some shade on the right hand side here. Need a little more than that. Just like one drop. And I end up getting a lot more than one drop. So in the intention is to go over the armor, focusing on the area around the belt. So like on the front here, you can see around the tunic. Focus in the underarms. And around the sides of this leather vest. Along either side of the collar. Build up on the right side and then go around the pouch here. And then what I'm going to do is take a tiny drop of this, go right over the top of that pouch, right across that front buckle there. See that buckle? Makes the buckle pop. And then on the other side as well, try and follow the edge of the top of the bag. Ended up with a little much there. So right now I washed off my brush, it's mostly dry. I'm trying to draw some away right there like that. So I think that's great. I'm gonna close up that one. Get a get known oil. Get that on a palette. I just kind of do a thick coat all over the hair. This is the reason why I went with a mid-tone gray with the hair color. So that now that I put the Nuln Oil on it, you can see that it gets a lot, lot deeper in colors and contrasts. Like that. How was that? little bit of pooling there on the side that I'm not happy with. And now what I want to do is take and make a gray shade. So this is Lamia Median. I put it in a dropper bottle so I can put one drop there on the palette. Get a tiny bit of known oil on the palette next to it. And then now I can pull the two together. And this is going to produce you know, a very watery light shade color that I can go over the lighter gray parts with. So right now I'm just going to brush on the sleeves here, sleeve there. You know what? Let's go for it. I'm going to put it on the red parts as well. I don't have uh, any of the Citadel red washes. Uh, the closest thing I have is a sepia, which I don't really think fits the bill for this one that well. So I'm just going to leave it. And then just for fun, 
we're going to wash this. There's still a lot of work to do on this flame. Um, but you know what? I got it mixed up. It's on the palette. We're going to go for it. Right now I'm just pushing it around on the skirt. I'm trying to not draw it onto the ruffles that we highlighted as much as possible. It doesn't matter what we try to do, it's gonna end up there anyway. I'm gonna have to go back and do some cleanup. So look right here. Hold on. So right here. A bit too much. Right here, there's a bit. Side of the skirt looks great. I'm gonna put a little bit more right there. Right there. Have any left? Got a tiny bit left. Actually, go under the neck a little. And low light the facial features. And now I'm just using what's on my brush. Create a little bit of quads and then a little bit on either side of the leg right there. So that's it. We got really uh, the initial stuff done. I'm going to try and see if the camera will auto focus on this. Here we go. The initial stuff done. Uh, got the shading done and now that the shade is on here I really just want to just relax, set it down, walk away. So that's it for this one tonight and uh, just a little bit each day oh god this right here I'm gonna see if the camera can focus on that you see that in the background camera that right there that's how disasters have you gotta close that stuff up so uh, that's that and uh, that's it for tonight and we'll pick it up tomorrow